Hey everybody, welcome back to The Basement, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be looking at a new freight set from Lionel. It is bright, it is loud, and it is a non-existent road name in my collection. It is the pacemaker set that you see behind me. And as a bonus, I picked up two Atlas pacemaker cars as well this past week, so we can look at the similarities between the Lionel cars and the Atlas cars. So if you're sitting thinking to yourself, maybe I want to add the two Atlas cars to my Lionel set, but you're not sure if they're going to match, you can watch this video and find out. So let's check it out right here on Chris's Strange and Things. was released in Lionel's 2021 Volume 1 Big Book alongside the L2A Mohawks as well. The New York Central developed what they called pacemaker service just after World War II in 1946. This service provided overnight fast freight between New York and Buffalo as well as Cleveland and eventually you'd find pacemaker service throughout other parts of the New York Central's line. Now, in 1957, pacemaker service was discontinued for early bird freight and at that point, you'd find these pacemaker cars broken up amongst many other freight trains of the day. So what does that mean for us? Well, it's, it's a nice thing because we can run this as a unit train like you see here, which is just pacemaker cars. Or you can mix this in with other 1950s, early 60s era freight that you might have in your collection, and it would actually be prototypical. So what does this set include? Well, we've got four PS4 boxcars. We've got a Vision Line sound box car and we have a matching caboose. So it's quite a set right out of the box. Now, to mix this up, I also picked up two different road numbers of pacemaker scheme that were recently released from Atlas. So we could, we're gonna do some comparisons of those here. Here on the right, we have our Atlas car. And on the left, we have our Lionel car. So as you can see, we've got some different colors in paint, door design, as well as some of the add-on detailing as well. But overall, I think that when you when you think back to car shops of the day, sometimes the paint order might be slightly different, and so it's not terribly uncommon to see some inconsistencies in the paint colors of cars. Now, the gray is quite different. The red on the Atlas is a little bit brighter. I think that Lionel, personally, I think that Lionel did a, a very nice job with their colors. This is a little bit bright for me. But the other piece that you see that's different here is the add-on. The latter here is black, where Lionel's is painted in the same scheme as the doors themselves. This is an Atlas Premier tooling, so it's an old MTH tooling that they're using. But it's a beautiful car, and I picked up two of them, as I said, two different road numbers, to go alongside my Lionel set. So it goes from a five-car set with caboose to a seven-car set with caboose. One of the other things you'll notice about this set is that even the Lionel ones have, they go between having just the white with clear back emblem to the black em emblem there that says New York Central System. So we've got some variations in the cars. They're not just the exact same paint scheme over and over again. And furthermore, we have a Vision Line Soundbox car that comes with this set. Now, what is the Vision Line Soundbox car? Vision Line rolling stock is getting more and more popular. They've got the stock cars that have come out. The pig stock cars are coming out. Now they're coming out with the horse cars. We've seen Soundbox cars before. In fact, I have one of the older ones in my collection. So one of the old box cars that I have is this old UP box car. Now this is obviously one that I've weathered. But as this, the car moves along the train, you can hear those sounds that it creates. So it creates a clickety clack for the back of your freight train. You can move this out of the way. Now the sound box cars are great. They create a great dynamic with the back of a really long train. And that clickety clack sound is really authentic and it's, it is a really neat effect. The Vision Line box car takes that to another level. So if we move this, it's got the sensors are a little bit more touchy in this. So 
so you can hear all those sounds that this thing creates as the train's moving. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is you can program it into your legacy remote and actually play some freight sounds. So we're gonna do that today too. So with the car on the track, you can just move it to get some of those clicky clack sounds. You also have on your remote some different loading and unloading options here, and they're all based around how often, like moving the car and then loading and unloading. So loading is obviously the air going into the box, unloading is it coming out of the box. Watch out, that one's gonna fall! Now we can move the car. And then what we're gonna do is on our legacy remote, we're gonna hit the load button again. And if we hold it in, it's gonna play an extended load sequence. That's 30 more pallets, right? All right, let's move these into the next car. This one's full. Yes, sir. All right, close this one up and open up the next car. Let's move these into the next car. This one's full. Yes, sir. Secure that door. We're done here. Finally, dang. Let's move on. All right, we can move the car again. And we should have one more load sequence. Okay, let's try to stay organized. That's 31 pallets, right? Yeah, that's one counted. On to the next station. And then we can also play an unload sequence by pressing the unload button. Let's get those pallets out of the way, ASAP. Let's sweep off those ramps too. Nice work, on time delivery. And finally, we should have a special sound with the Ox 3 button. Watch out! Pretty neat stuff. Now, again, you can hold in any of those buttons for extended sequences. You also have these A, B buttons, and they're gonna do like the, the rail grinding sounds, some clickety-clack sounds that you can turn on and off, depending on what you like. Now, when your boxcar comes, if it's not creating any of those sounds, if we pick it up here and look underneath, you've got your run program switch and then a min-max switch. You need to have it set to max to get those extended sequences. Otherwise, if you have it on minimum, it's just gonna do clicky clack sounds. It's not gonna give you those load sequences. There's also a volume adjustment there. And then you've got your IR sensor for your sensor track as well. Now, Vision Line boxcars can be a bit pricey, but they do add that neat element of authentic sounds at the end of your train. Now, these this set from Lionel retailed for $499.99. However, if you go to a dealer, you can get it for a little bit cheaper. The other thing, if we slide this up, that we get is the matching caboose, which is a really nice feature as well. The one thing that I would like to point out is that this caboose is an older tooling. You'll see how much thicker the handrails are, the chain is cast in, the lanterns are just like clear plastic with LEDs underneath them to light up. So not as much scale detailing as maybe we would, we would like to see, but it is a nice addition to this freight set. And these are gonna look great behind the Mohawks when they do arrive. All right, before we run these around the layout, I have to be frank with you, I don't have any New York Central motive power. As I said, this set, I have a caboose and I have an old PS1 box car. That's it for New York Central. So we're gonna use some Pensy Legacy Alcos to pull these around the layout today. I just want you to bear with me on that. So let's go ahead and do that. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't. We really appreciate you guys joining us for our ride here at Christmas Trains and Things. Let's take the pacemakers around the layout. <laughs>